In custom car audio, we oftentimes will upgrade a vehicle sound system by upgrading the factory speakers and going from this to this. Now, as you can see, our new speaker has a different mounting pattern than our factory speaker. So in order to mount our new speaker within the vehicle, we're going to need a speaker adapter. Now you can purchase a speaker adapter, but many times they're a one size fits all application. In other words, it might not perfectly match the particular speaker that you want to install, or there might not even be one available for your vehicle. 3D printing offers a unique solution in the fact that we can now 3D print our own speaker adapter. In this video, I'm going to take you through the whole process of using a 3D printer to make this adapter. We'll go all the way from measuring the initial design to printing to final installation. Let's dive right in. So here it is right here. This is the center channel speaker within this vehicle. You can see that it has this factory grill on it. So the first step we're going to do is we need to, of course, get this off and get access to our factory speaker adapter. You can see we've got some foam around the outside here. We've got the speaker itself. We've got some mounting hardware. Let's go ahead and detach the speaker from the vehicle. The mounting fasteners are removed so we can carefully pull this out here. So there's our old factory speaker and this is our new aftermarket speaker that we're going to be installing. But there is a problem. When we go to set our new aftermarket speaker in here, we'll set it in place. But you're going to notice that we can no longer pick up the factory mounting locations. So I know that in order to actually mount this in the vehicle, I'm going to need to make a new speaker adapter that's gonna bolt the speaker into the vehicle. Now, traditionally, we could fabricate something like that, but in this case, there's another problem as well. If I set this speaker on top of the factory speaker, you can see that the distance from the tab mounting holes to the inside of the inner diameter of the new speaker flange, it's really not that thick. We're talking definitely less than about a quarter of an inch. Because of the small amount of distance that I have to work with, I know that using traditional fabrication techniques for making this ring are gonna make it really challenging. It's hard to work with something so small. This is where 3D printing is going to come to the rescue. Before we can start 3D printing though, we obviously need a model. So I'm going to start with taking a bunch of dimensions of the stock speaker. I'm also gonna incorporate some dimensions of our new aftermarket speaker. And I'm just gonna do this using a micrometer. You could also use a ruler, whatever you have accessible. And I definitely recommend getting some graph paper. You can actually even print out graph paper online it just makes things a little bit easier to control while you're sketching. I start with tracing the factory speaker as a way to get my initial shape. I can then start taking reference dimensions of the overall diameter of the speaker and some of the other features and record that onto the graph paper. And with that, we have everything we need to now move on to modeling. Since I had all of my dimensions documented, I was able to create this 3D model. Now this isn't meant to be a modeling tutorial, so I'm gonna go through these steps pretty quickly, but I'm using Autodesk Fusion 360 in order to create this part. I started with creating this sketch, which is the overall geometry, and then I extruded it. Now that I had this extrusion, I was able to create a sketch for the inside cutout hole and then make that cut. Next, I needed to create the six different holes for our aftermarket speaker, but you'll notice that this is super thin. So what I had to do is I had to make these six tabs that stick out and I extruded those as well. Now that I had these six tabs made, I could model my first hole. Now something else I noticed when I was modeling this is that this part, these tabs right here and right here were a little thick. I wanted to actually make them a little bit more thin, just like the factory adapter. So what I did is I drew a small sketch on those tabs and then I extruded and cut it away, thus making those parts of the bracket much more thin. Now I need this hole on all six of the tabs, so I did a circular pattern. And the final thing left to do is just to add some cleanup. So if you watch the edges, I actually added some fillets. You can see the fillets here and here in each of the corners. This makes the part have a much more finished look and it also strengthens some of these corners on these tabs since it's no longer a hard point. So I have my 3D model created. The final thing to do is I can come over to my bodies and I can right click and I can save as an STL file. And the STL file is what we're going to import into our 3D printing program. In our 3D printing program, the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to drop in the file, we're gonna orient it to the build plate and center it. Now the software that I'm using is called Simplify 3D and it gives us all sorts of different options for different ways to control the print. All of these different controls affect the G code. So once I go to prepare to print, these different controls are going to control the way that this printer actually makes the part layer by layer. 
For this print, I'm going to start with what's called a raft, and this is to make sure that the part will have good adhesion with the build plate. So it builds that up first, and then it will actually start making the part layer by layer with all the infill, and then it caps off the top. I'm satisfied with all these settings, so I'm going to go to Save Toolpath to Disk, and I'll save this as a G-code file. Now that I have the G-code file, I can load up my Robo web interface, and I can drop the file and upload it locally to the machine. We can see the file right here, so it's now stored on the machine for us to print. Now that we have the 3D model complete for our speaker adapter, what we need to do is we need to choose a material that we're actually going to print the adapter from. I'm going to be using ABS filament, and the reason I'm using ABS is because of the high temperatures that our speaker adapter will likely be exposed to being on the dash. So here's the 3D printer that I'm using to show you guys this project. This is the Robo R2. So the first thing we need to do here is we need to go to utilities and then wizards, and then we need to do a filament load. I've put the filament on the back of the machine here and I've pushed it through this white tube and we can now feed it into the top here. We will push next. Now the extruder is running. We just have to wait for material to start to come out the nozzle. There we go. Material is coming out now. So we can hit next and that's it. Now we are ready to print. So since I've dropped the file over Wi-Fi and sent it to the printer, if I click files here and go to local storage, we can see there's our speaker adapter G code right there. So we can click that and then we can just simply hit start. And here we have it. Our print is now underway. Now I'm going to fast forward you guys. Let's do a quick time lapse of this thing printing. So we're about halfway through the print right now and I just want to give you guys literally a little bit of an inside look. You can see on the inside of the actual piece there, it's putting in the infill material which it goes back and forth between the two different walls. And then on this part here, it started to finish so it's completely covering up that top surface. And about two hours later, our print is now complete. So now I'll remove this from the build plate using a putty knife. And this should just break away pretty easily. There we go. Let's just do a quick alignment to check our modeling with the factory speaker adapter. You can see that the tabs line up perfectly. Now let's do a test with our new speaker. Make sure it lines up with all the holes, which it does. Now some of you guys may have noticed that I have these little imperfections here and that was my own fault when I set up the print settings. All I really needed to do is add a couple more additional top layers, which is just a setting that you can choose when you're exporting to G-Code. So I printed a second one here and you can see that looks nice. So that's what's really nice about 3D printing. If you make a mistake, if you had to redesign your model, it's easy to do so and then just hit print and you can go do something else while your part is being made. I need a way to attach the aftermarket speaker to our speaker adapter, so I'm using these threaded inserts. These inserts are designed to be heated up and then heat set within our new part, and I'm using a soldering iron to do so. I repeat this process for all six of the holes, and as you can see, I now have a spot that our fasteners will thread into. Let's get our new speaker bracket installed. So we can start with putting our new bracket back in position and then bolting it in place. There we go. And now I've connected the new speaker wire to the new speaker and we can put it in place and now we can fasten it into position. There we have it. Now all we have left is to reinstall the factory grill. And there you have it, we are done. For those of you that are interested in checking out the model that I made of this speaker adapter, it's available for download down in the video description. A special thanks goes out to Robo for helping support this video. I've been using the R2 for a few months now and it was really easy to start up. And even though I've been playing around with 3D printing for a few years, I feel like if I was brand new to 3D printing that it would actually be really easy to start up and get going on this machine. If you'd like more information about the R2, you can check out links down below. If you're new here, here on this channel, I do car audio reviews and lessons and build log videos. And I've also done a couple other car audio related 3D printing videos. I'll put those here on screen for you guys to check out. Thank you all for watching.